Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're reviewing a G Skyer number 70400 telescope on a alt azimuth mount. So if you've just stumbled upon this channel from out there in YouTube land somewhere, I review enthusiast astronomy equipment by amateur astronomers who are very serious about what they do. And that being the case, this sort of scrapes the bottom of what I normally cover here. And there have been club members who say, well, don't bother reviewing this because it's in the toy category. I thought we'd go ahead and do this anyway for a couple of reasons. Number one, it might surprise us. And number two, we might be able to steer some people into something that might be a little bit more suitable if they're going to be serious about looking up at the night sky. So first of all, what we have here is a refractor. It's a telescope with a lens at one end. Here is the focuser, and here is the eyepiece at the other end. To change magnifications, you change eyepieces. Here is a low power finder scope designed to help you find things, and the mount, which goes alt azimuth, we call it. It goes up and down, and it goes left and right. So those of you who know telescopes have probably immediately identified some problems here. If you're new to this, if you've never done this before, let me give you a couple of hints. So first of all, if you're looking at a very inexpensive telescope, don't even bother looking at the optical tube. Look at the mount. The mount is the thing that's going to determine how happy or in how unhappy you're going to be with the particular telescope. See if this looks a little bit flimsy to you because anything that you're going to magnify, any unsteadiness in this mount is going to be magnified by the eyepiece. And also see if this thing looks like it might be able to smoothly pan across the sky. Keep in mind the earth does rotate. So even when you do find something, it's gonna be moving out of the field of view. So you're gonna be constantly adjusting things here and there. And we find it, it is the mount that winds up making people unhappy with these cheap telescopes. Another thing to look at is this. This is a 45 degree erecting diagonal. What it does is it makes things so that things appear left and right and up and down. The idea is you can use this terrestrially, but what most people find is when they do use it terrestrially, it's not all that interesting. You really do need a 90 degree diagonal, which helps you much better in the night sky and doesn't have all those extra optical elements in it. So right away, we're looking at a couple of strikes against it. Number one, the mount is cheap. And number two, we've got an indication here that all might not be in high quality land. But let's take a quick look at this and look at the components inside. Okay, so I wanted to show you what's inside the case here. And I didn't want to spend a huge amount of time doing this. I think I'd rather spend time showing you what you could be doing instead. And at least one of the things I'm going to show you is going to be free. Now, this is not exactly the way you're going to get it. Most of these things are tied down by these, these tie downs here. I loosened everything. I took all of the lens caps off because you don't want to be spending your time watching me do that. So here is the optical tube, 70 millimeter, 400 millimeter focal length, hence the model number, rack and pinion focuser. This is a standard inch and a quarter visual back. That is actually quite welcome. Don't rack this out too much. You go beyond the travel of the rack and it can be difficult to get that back on. The tripod, you know, if this were just a tripod for holding your smartphone or something for the holidays, it might be okay. It is inadequate for this optical tube. The finder, oh my, the finder. <laughs> it's normally got a, a aperture of around one inch. But if you look, I don't know if you can see that, there is an enormous field stop in there that cuts that light down to almost nothing. And in fact, one of the guys seeing this said, you know what, you might be better off just ripping the optics out of this thing entirely and just using it as a peep sight. That's perhaps not a, a bad idea. This is a 45 degree erect image diagonal. Here's one of the indications that this is not a high quality product. They include these with toys and junk scopes. The reason these aren't that great is there's a lot more elements in here than there are with a standard 90 degree diagonal that you use for astronomy and terrestrial observing, never all that interesting. We have two eyepieces and here's a pleasant surprise. This eyepiece, quite nice, nice, I like that. It's almost as if this walked in from another telescope. That's something you can salvage if you decide to move on. That's the 25 millimeter low power eyepiece. That's the one you're going to be using the most often. Here's the 10 millimeter. Again, very nice. 
if you know your eyepieces, these are about at the quality of the old Orion Explorer II Kellner eyepieces. These are keepers. All right, so there's two indications that we have a telescope that is in the borderline toy slash junk category. And number one is the dreaded Barlow lens. Oh my, this is a cheap piece of plastic. 3X. This triples the power of any eyepiece that you put on it. This is here for marketing purposes. They know if they can write that on the box that it might entice you to buy it. So this has traditionally been the indicator of junk, but we have another one in these modern times, and that is, of course, the dreaded cell phone holder where you can take pictures. Now, I will say this. This one is not quite as bad as some of the others that I've seen but it's not great. So here's how this is supposed to work. You put the 25 millimeter eyepiece in here, this retaining ring holds it in place, and then you just put this into the telescope and your phone goes here. So the, the camera would go where this eyepiece is, so it would kind of go down like this. I just want to warn you, this is far more difficult than most people realize. This can be very frustrating, especially with the unsteadiness in the mount. Let's take a quick look at the instructions. And again, we have some indications here that perhaps whoever wrote this, they don't really understand what it is that we do. So these tripod leg locks here, these things, you can look at these instructions online. They refer to these locks as tabletting. Tabletting, I've never heard that word before. The diagonal here, is referred to as a zenith mirror. I don't know where they got that term from. And to use the cell phone adapter, it says, here are optional charging accessories. Don't know what that means either. <laughs> so on the diagonal, if I'm reading this correctly, they're telling you to always use the Barlow lens. That is a dangerous piece of advice. If you know telescopes, you know that you should never use that thing, especially on a very cheap telescope. So overall, I don't think this is quite as bad as I expected. A lot of these items here are a little bit better than what you might expect out of a, you know, the toy category, the eyepieces in particular. And in looking through the objective lens of the optical tube itself, this isn't too bad. You know, is it enough to rescue all of this? I don't think so. I'm still going to say this is not recommended, but again, this is better than I expected. Okay, so here's the part of the review that I was dreading the most. I know you want to see some pictures taken through this thing. And again, I have been through this so many times. This is far more difficult than you might imagine. So let me show you a couple things here. So first of all, let me show you how the mount is balanced. Let's go ahead and put this down. I'm going to go ahead and loosen this and you'll see it's, it's back heavy. It's already back heavy without the phone on it. When you put the phone on it, it becomes even more back heavy to the point where this becomes top heavy, and I have seen these things fall over. Now, the second thing is, the actual plane of focus, that sphere of focus that's acceptable, is within one or two millimeters along all three axes. So it's gonna be a lot harder to find that than you might think. And not only that, once you get the object in focus, let's say it's the moon, the Earth is always turning, and by the time you get everything focused, it's going to be moving out of the field of view again, which means you're going to have to be loosening this and moving it over again, and you wind up chasing your tail. It's not fun. You want to do it? Go ahead. <laughs> I did it, but look, I, I know I can't stand some of these items on here. For example, I can't stand this diagonal, so I just put a cheap 90-degree diagonal on it. This finder is just plain awful. So you saw me put this down earlier. This is a Rigel quick finder. It projects a red dot at infinity. So I put this on here like this. Things got a lot easier. And I wasn't even gonna risk having this thing topple over. So I put the whole rig on this Bogan 3001 with a 3030 head on it. This isn't perfect either, but it's a whole lot more steady than what's here. So look, if I'm gonna be miserable, I'm gonna be miserable on my terms. So I did manage to snap a couple of these images. These are unretouched images straight out of the camera. Could I have done better? Maybe, but I just didn't feel like it. Are you happy with those images? If you are, hey, maybe this is okay for you.
So again, I don't want to spend a huge amount of time talking about this telescope. I want to give you some alternatives. And I'm going to give you three alternates to buying this telescope. And here they are in increasing order of cost. So your first option is getting an app on your phone. I use Planets, but there are, I don't know, lots of them out there. They are free. It's a virtual star atlas that you point up at the sky, and then you just get a chair and you sit outside. If you have a lawn chair that reclines, just recline back, look at the stars and you'll learn a lot. You'll have a ball. It takes the Earth a year to go around the sun, so you could potentially keep yourself entertained for an entire year without spending one cent. Second option, you're going to be spending around $50 to $70 on this one. Get a pair of cheap 7x35 binoculars. 7 is the magnification, 35 is the aperture. Believe it or not, that's enough. The human eye can see maybe two to 3,000 stars in any clear night, depending on how dark your skies are and how tall your horizons are. You get one of these things, that number of stars you can see goes up to a couple of hundred thousand, depending on where you are. And it's fun to do to just look up at the night sky, even if you have no idea what you're looking at. But if you want to know what you're looking at, you can continue to use the app that I saw, showed you on the phone, or you can go to the library or buy yourself a star atlas. This is an atlas just like you find from an atlas of the Earth, except it's up in the night sky. You can also get, and I like these a lot, this is called a planisphere, and you dial in the time and the date, look up at the night sky, it'll show you what's up there. Okay, so let's say you really want to dive in and get serious about astronomy. This is commonly the minimum telescope that I would recommend. It's called a six inch Dobsonian reflector. It's a reflector because it has a mirror in the back, unlike the lens on the telescope that we're reviewing here. It reflects light into a diagonal mirror and into the eyepiece here. This is how you focus and to change magnifications, you change eyepieces. Keep in mind, the reflector and the refractor are opposite of one another. In a refractor, you look through the back of the telescope. In a reflector, you look into the side of a telescope. Now here, you've got a generous six inches worth of mirror gathering light for you, which means you're going to be able to see a lot dimmer objects. And you'll notice the complaint I had before about the mount doesn't exist here because this is a very solid mount. Now one of these is going to set you back around $400 to $450. Yes, that sounds like a lot, but below that range, there are going to be compromises in either the optical tube, the mount, or the accessories that are going to make this very difficult for you to use. And this is really the minimum that what we find where you're not really going to have any complaints. Okay, so I am going to cut this company a break for at least a couple of reasons. Number one, they are not the only ones brand labeling this. You find this brand labeled by a lot of different other companies. And the second reason I'm going to cut them a break is because as we get towards the top end of this company's line, we start getting into a series of telescopes that might be acceptable for beginner use before they move on to something else. Okay, folks, there you have it. A look at the G Skyer 70400 Refracting Telescope. I hope you found this information interesting and informative. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.